Hello everyone out there in YouTube land. In keeping with my previous video, test equipment, uh, I've been meaning to do a video on this thing for a while. Picked it up at the swap meet. It's a Heath kit model AG10 sine wave and square wave oscillator. Creates a uh, sine or square wave signals uh, variable frequency from about 20 hertz to 1 megahertz and it's basically uh, got uh, sine and square wave source variable amplitude ranges you start at the 0.1 volt 1 volt and 10 volt for each uh, sine and square and sine will even go down to even a lower range 0.01 volt and frequency multiplier frequency amplitude for the square wave output amplitude for the sine wave output and this is just the way I found it I got it picked it up for just a couple of bucks very little money um, I thought the meters were original equipment but on closer examination, they're not in the uh, manual. And it does look like the guy, uh, somebody, the original owner, must have uh, cut the holes in there. And anyway, he's uh, <laughs> more talented than I am at that. I, uh, if I tried to do it, there's no way it would look that good. <laughs> um, not quite sure, you know, what the purpose is. As I turn the level up, you can see, you know, it's for measuring level but the range they're independent of range so he's looking at it before uh, I guess it gets uh, amplified in the final stage here and I've got the output of it hooked up to my scope and my little ICO signal tracer where I'm just using the uh, output transformer function into the speaker and that's about you know 400 Hertz on the one volt range and it can get quite loud if you go up to this 10 volt that's starting to get pretty loud there and down here on the scope uh, you can see it's not perfect there's some you know distortion there and it was a little bit worse when I first turned the thing on and as it's warmed up it's gotten a little bit better there's looks like there's a problem with the square wave function over here on square wave I wouldn't try to guess what it is but maybe it's the pot because it just does nothing and then all of a sudden so maybe I'll try cleaning that potentiometer and testing it on the scope, I don't get a very good uh, looking square wave. The peaks are sloped pretty bad, so we'll see if there's anything we can do about that. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Let's get a look at what's inside. Okay, here's a look at the internals of the oscillator. Uh, some interesting stuff going on here. It's, it's uh, very nicely built. Even these aftermarket additions of these meters, he built the these little terminal strips and there's uh, quite a lot going on there. Some diodes, resistors and capacitors, diodes to rectify the the AC signal. And then he tied them in uh, beneath the chassis. This filter here is a 11,000 microfarad uh, or 12,000 microfarad 11 volt. And <laughs> Here's one made today, well, close enough anyway, 10,000, a lot smaller. So uh, he added that along with a bridge, a rectifier bridge underneath to filter the DC heater, or the AC heater voltages to DC, probably in an effort to uh, make the output cleaner, uh, reduce hum. Although there's a lot of capacitors in these things. You can see we got two section anyway three cans four sections here I believe uh, there's just a lot a lot of uh, filtering because they want very clean power 
and I'll go ahead and flip this thing over so we can get a look underneath. So here's a look at underneath. They did a, a really nice job soldering this kit. Somebody uh, really took their time. All the capacitor leads are uh, insulated. And the soldering job is just very neat, very neatly done. And what's interesting, it has these solid state rectifiers over here. And then they went ahead and added, but this was never finished. They added this pair of OA2 uh, voltage regulator tubes, which give you 150 volt DC regulated output at 30 milliamps each. But they hooked up the input so you can see they're running, but the outputs were never connected. So I'd have to do some uh, measurements to see how much current uh, this thing needs to see if I can uh, wire those in and try it, you know, try it out. But, I mean, honestly, it works pretty well. I don't know how much improvement you would get. And then, of course, there's just a lot of potentially leaky capacitors here. Uh, I, did, uh, I did do some research into why the square wave output is only working at maximum. This uh, potentiometer that controls the output, it's in the the cathode of this uh, 6AW8 output tube. Well, it's it's fried, and it's probably fried because this grid coupling capacitor is extremely leaky. There's there's over 100 volts leaking through it. So I do have a replacement for that one. I'll go ahead and change that out, and uh, and then even though the pot's damaged, it works at the near the end of its range, and I'll see if uh, you know if we get a better output after uh, changing that out. And here's that capacitor that I removed, uh, leaking at 50 volts. The eye is not uh, opening back up. So it's definitely bad. And when I try to test the value, the eye barely opens up. Well, it's not even opening anymore. I can see it trying to, but at uh, 2.4 microfarads, it's not opening up. It's trying to, though. Okay, having replaced the coupling capacitor for the square wave output final stage, um, and adjusting the waveform a little bit. I've got something that looks a lot more like a square wave here, but the, it's pretty much an all or nothing kind of thing. The pot, as you see, it just drops off to nothing when you turn it about a quarter turn. So the right way to fix this is to get a new potentiometer. But anyway, that's the uh, Heathkit AG10. We'll see if I can get that uh, control at a reasonable price um, you know we'll look around for it for a while but uh, that'll wrap up this video thanks for watching